It's Brad Powers. How are you making out? How you doing well? Thanks for having me as always. Yes, sir. Okay, so we got a trio of picks, but let's kick around a couple of topics before we get to those picks, Brad. Let's start with what we saw from uh, Mario Cristobal and uh, the Miami <laughs> Hurricanes this weekend, where all they need to do was kneel to win. And of course, uh, comedy of errors, they run, they fumble, uh, they end up losing the game. Uh, was that the worst coaching decision you've ever seen in college football? It's certainly way up there. Uh, you know, it's tough to win football games uh, in today's day and age. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know why you're running the football there. Uh, just take a knee, call it, call it a day. You, 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 did, you failed to meet expectations because you already were a three touchdown favorite in that game. Uh, obviously, that was as egregious as could be, but just as egregious as the defense giving up a two play yes. touchdown drive after the fumble. It's not like they fumbled at their own 10 yard line. I mean, <laughs> they fumbled at the 25 and Georgia tech able to, to go 75 yards, two plays, boom, bang, uh touchdown. I mean, it's just one of the worst losses I've ever seen. And you, you, carrying it forward, you got to wonder if it leaks into this week uh, because if I'm a player, I got to question my coaching staff. Are they putting me in a be best position to win? So it's going to be very interesting to see how they respond this week against a really good North Carolina team on the road. Yeah. In peewee football, they kneel down and at that point of the game. What was going on there? Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the national championship odds board here. So we have, you can kind of split the, the top of the odds board into two or three tiers. The top tier, it's two teams. Obviously Georgia remains on top. Plus 260. This is DraftKings that I'm looking at. Uh, Michigan all the way up to plus 340. Then we see a bit of a drop off here. Florida State, Ohio State, Penn State, Washington, Oregon, and all Oklahoma all eight to one to 14 to one. Then a bit of a drop off. Texas, Alabama, and USC. USC 25 to one. Uh, Alabama is still hanging out there at 20 to one. So you go down to that second and third tier. Out of those teams, who do you think we should be taking more seriously? And who doesn't stand a chance? Which of those teams should we just maybe throw out and say they have no <laughs> shot at getting into the national championship game, let alone winning it? It's a good question. Uh, I think most years I would throw out like 10 teams and say, ah, they just don't have a shot. This year's a little bit different, uh, where I think there are legitimately 10, 12 teams that can win it. With that being said, I, we're starting to see the separation. Now, neither one has played anybody yet, but they're starting to look the part, and it looks like very it's repeatable the way they're playing stylistically when you just beat somebody up at the line of scrimmage consistently, and that's Georgia and Michigan, so uh, particularly Michigan more than Georgia, to be honest with you. Out of those second and third tiers, I'm going to give you one that the team's not out of it. They had a disappointing loss on Saturday, but you look at the future schedule, they're going to be favored in every single one of the remaining games. And they're likely to catch their opponent in a rematch in the Big 12 championship game, that being the Texas Longhorns, who I do not think their national title aspirations went up in smoke. Now, their margin for error certainly did losing to, to Oklahoma, but that's a team I'm not ready to, you know, crumble up and, and throw in the garbage can just yet. The team, the, the, the big mover this week is going to obviously be the winner of the Washington Oregon game. Uh, I like Washington in the game. So if you want to get out in front of a little bit of a line move there, uh, Washington might be worth something. And again, if you find a really good price on Texas, I, I think that's a, 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 a quote unquote long shot uh, worth a flyer right now. Yeah, futures betting all about timing and a team coming off a loss like that may be a good spot to uh, jump on the Longhorn. So, what about the Heisman futures odds board? Anything standing out to you there? So, I did make a bet today. Not that I think he's going to oh, be a shoe in to win it, but I, I think it's showing some value in my numbers. That's JJ McCarthy, the quarterback for Michigan, 30 to 1. Uh, if you look at total QBR, he's number one in the country. I know he's not putting up the counting stats as a Michael Penix for Washington, a Bo Nix, a Caleb Williams. But, uh, you know, when you're number one in the country in QBR, you're doing something right. And uh, going to get a lot of keep in mind, the Heisman has not is transitioned from being a career achievement award to basically who plays the best football in the month of November. And Michigan's going to have two extremely high-profile games against Penn State and Ohio State in November. And I'm here to tell you, if J.J. McCarthy performs well, and I like Michigan in both of those games, and they win them, uh, he's going to be sitting there in New York. So if, if I can get a guy 30-1 to 1 that's going to be sitting there as a Heisman finalist, I like value. Yeah, looks like a nice spot there indeed. Okay, so let's get into some of these early looks, Brad. Let's start with uh, Cincinnati, Iowa State, a five-point spread in this one. What side do you like? 
Well, first of all, let, let's try to have a winning week here. It's been a, a tough start here for these bets, to say the least, especially the Monday bets. But uh, here's what I see in this game. Number one, I made the game seven. So hopefully we get in front of a line move here. Uh, what, what do I see adva- advantage-wise? It's a Cincinnati team that statistically is much better than their two and three record. You go through all their final, their box scores, and, and you look at the scoreboard and you look at the box score, and the box score says Cincinnati should have won by more than, than the final score and even in some of the games that they've lost. What I like in, about this particular team is they got a first-year coach, heavy uh, transfer portal. They just came off a bye. So it, when, when you look at the, some of their inefficiencies, it's in the red zone. So I would like to think – they could use the bye week to clean up some of those issues. And they're getting an Iowa State team that's probably sitting fat and happy off an upset win over TCU. So I like Cincinnati, the much more statistically dominant team here, laying a short number. Okay, next up, we have another game with a spread inside of a touchdown. San Diego State and Hawaii, a six-point spread in this one. Who do you like here? Yeah, number one, I made it seven. Uh, San Diego State's coming off four straight losses. So it's, in my opinion, a buy low spot. But you look at who they lost to. I mean, Oregon State, UCLA, two pretty good Pac-12 teams. Boise State, Air Force, probably the two of the three best teams in the Mountain West. And you also look at uh, the what, what's the market done with San Diego State? Have they thrown them in the trash the last couple of games that they played? No, actually, the market's been betting on San Diego State, especially late in the week. So I like to look at those uh, market moves once the limits opened up. And I'm also fading a Hawaii team that you know, might have won their last game uh, against New Mexico State, but I wasn't overly impressed, to say the least, in, in that performance. I bet on Hawaii. They should have lost the game. So uh, kind of fading Hawaii as well as playing on San Diego State here, minus the number. Okay, last but not least, sitting there with a seven-point spread, we have a matchup between Temple and North Texas. Do you like the favorite or do you like the underdog in this matchup? I like the dog. So this is a teaching moment here. A lot of times this time of year, we're sitting here mid-October, middle of the season. What, where do you find some value? Well, I, I, I think some teams get expensive and some teams you can get a bargain on. What do I mean by that? Look at how teams are doing histo- you know, throughout the season against the spread. We are betting on a team here in Temple that has not covered a point spread against an FBS opponent this year. So why would I want to do that? They haven't covered yet this year. Why would you want to jump in now? Because we are getting a bargain, in my opinion, on this one. I made this line five. Nobody wants to bet Temple uh, because they haven't covered a point spread. But I'm here to tell you, they should have last week. It was a very misleading final against UTSA, and they easily should have covered that game uh, what what turned out to be a 15-point loss against UTSA. So uh, I'm not buying a North Texas team that has the worst defense in the country laying points. Okay, Brad, let's end with this. Uh, Of course, as everyone knows, uh, the NHL season starts tomorrow and everyone's tuning in for your pick to win the Stanley Cup. So who are you picking to win the whole thing this year? Uh, I am not picking the Vegas Golden Knights. I'll put it that way. Uh, uh, I don't know. You you know how many times I've bet on hockey uh, since I've lived here for almost a decade? Three times. And they were all against the Vegas Golden Knights. So I am not a big hockey guy. But if I could bet the no on the Vegas Golden Knights repeating at Stanley Cup, that's what I would do. Take the field. Uh, yeah, even if I had to lay 20 to 1. I mean, I, I, I just – they were too busy celebrating that Stanley Cup uh, from what I've heard here uh, in town. Yeah, the boys are probably still hung over from that celebration there in Las Vegas. So, yeah, maybe don't expect a fast start from <laughs> the Vegas no. Golden Knights. So we thank you, Brad, for that uh, NHL betting insight there. Uh, yeah. Brad, of course, will be back with us on Thursday where we will be breaking down the biggest games of the week in college football. Brad, thanks again for joining us, and best of luck with your handicapping this week. Hey, thanks for having me as always, Joe.